I got interested in microphones, more of an engineering in interest in them, not a use case interest in them, although uh, I do use microphones, but uh, probably will never buy an expensive microphone. I was kind of curious about why so certain microphones are expensive and certain microphones are not and why that would be. In particular, I'm going to talk about one type of microphone, the condenser microphone. The condenser microphone uses a element that is a capacitor. So the word condenser and the word capacitor, they're one and the same. Before 1930, people called them condensers, and after 1930, people called them capacitors. And the way that these microphones convert um, sound waves into electrical signals is by having a capacitor that has a charge on it. And when you um, have sound waves strike the plates of the capacitor, the plates move with, rel with uh, relation to one another and they cause the capacitance to vary. And if the capacitance vary and the charge stays the same, then the voltage uh, will, will, will change across that capacitor. And that's the way these things work. So here's an old microphone from Germany. This is Telefunken. And you can see maybe why these microphones were expensive. They looked like they had a very expensive capacitor on the top, the condenser part, the, the microphone part. And then they included an amplification circuit. So you can see that here, there's uh, an amplifier inside the microphone. So instead of sending small signals down the cable, you're sending large signals down the cable and that will increase your signal to noise ratio. Here's another uh, view of a old microphone. This one might not be so old, but it actually still has a tube in it. You can still buy microphones that use tube preamplifiers. Now, a lot of people think that tubes sound better, and a lot of people say, no, you can just go ahead and use an FET. So most modern microphones use FETs and not vacuum tubes. This is a Neumann U87, and this is one of the most um, revered microphones, I guess. If you go into any good recording studio, they will have a Neumann U87. These are $3,200 new, I think. They're very expensive microphones, but they're very, very nice microphones. And I got curious of, well, why does a microphone have to cost $3,200? It doesn't seem like there's all that much in them. You know, why hasn't um, China got a hold of them and started mass producing them? Maybe there's no need for them. Maybe they only sell a thousand of these a year, and so there's no money in it. Um, but if you take a look, yes, cheaper and cheaper microphones are starting to be made. And even though those cheap microphones are being made, the Neumann U87 is still there and still one of the premier microphones. Here's a cutaway view of the Neumann 87, and you can see it looks really nice. Uh, there's the capsule at the top, that's the capacitor. What, and the capacitors are made out of, I believe, a mica um, membrane. Some of the old Neumann microphones, I believe, had uh, polypropylene or some type of plastic membrane, but they degraded over time. So I think people are making them mostly out of mylar now, which is more rugged. Now, plastic or mylar is non-conductive, so you have to create a, a capacitor plate. The way they do that is they sputter these things with gold, and um, that's one of the reasons they're expensive. They also have to be machined to a very, very high tolerance because the distance between the two plates has to be quite small. Here's a close-up of a, a large condenser microphone. The center portion, the part that actually vibrates, is about one inch in diameter. The outer diameter is about 40, uh, 34 millimeters. So sometimes you'll hear these called a one inch condenser. Sometimes you'll hear them called a 34 millimeter. But the active area is about um, 25 millimeters. Now, what you can see here is kind of a translucent looking device. Those holes are actually in the back plate. So the membrane is in front and a very thin layer of gold is either sputtered on or uh, vacuum deposited on the mylar. And that creates one side of the capacitor. And then the other side of the capacitor is a gold-plated brass piece with holes drilled in it. 
um, for various reasons that I'm not quite sure about. But um, one electrical connection is made to the mylar, one electrical connection is made to the backplate, and it causes a capacitor. That capacitor needs a charge on it in order to work. It needs voltage inside of it to create a charge of electrons. And these capacitors sometimes have 60 volts on them. They might have 72 volts on them, uh, depending on the manufacturer, depending on the capsule. But 60 volts is a, is a typical value. So I talked about why doesn't China build these things. Well, they've started to now. Um, there's a bunch of these condenser microphones out of China that are quite ubiquitous now. This one called the BM700, which looks almost like, almost exactly like the Neumann 87. There's also one called the BM800. The insides of those two microphones is exactly the same, usually, and the outsides looks a little different. The, the BM700, like I said, looks like a, a U87. The BM800 looks more cylindrical in nature. It's basically that top section where there's the wire mesh. Um, it looks just a little bit different, but basically they're exactly the same. Here's what the insides of a cheap Chinese microphone looks, looks like. Now, when I say cheap, I've, these, I've seen these things on Alibaba for $13 in volume. So these are really, really, really cheap. Um, and uh, that's for the whole thing, not just this guts. And that's for the whole microphone ready to sell, $13. So you can see that the um, sensor on top, the condenser part on top, looks different. And in fact, it's a bit deceiving. They use a large piece of plastic, so you think that this is a large condenser. But in fact, it's a small little microphone pressed into a piece of plastic to make it look big. So the actual area is quite small. I think it's about 16 millimeters, so it's much, much smaller. It also is not the type of condenser that's used in the expensive microphones. It does not require any voltage to have a charge inside. It's made out of a plastic membrane, and that plastic membrane is pre-charged, almost like uh, rubbing a rod with cat fur or a balloon in your hair making static electricity. Well, these are pre-charged, so there's a built-up charge on that plastic element inside, and so you don't have to apply any more electricity. When these things vibrate, voltage comes out of them right from the get-go. And uh, the circuit, of course, is much, much simpler. <laughs> no, no tube amplifier. There is a FET, um, but there's very few components, so it's a much, much simpler circuit. And here's a close-up of what the electric uh, microphone looks, at, looks like. Um, it is much smaller. So I said it needed a simple circuit, and the simple circuit was developed years ago by another German microphone company. Uh, Schwab's, I think, is the, is the way to pronounce it. I might be butchering it, but I'll, I'll say Schwab's. Um, and this is a simple circuit. It doesn't require too many transistors. And if we look at the bottom section here of the schematic, there's a little section of electronics. And what that is, is a DC to DC converter. It takes incoming voltage into the microphone and steps it up to 60 volts. So that's all that section does. It's a DC to DC converter. Now the upper section of the schematic is the actual amplifier. And it's basically only three transistors, one FET transistor and two bipolar transistors. And the way to kind of think of this circuit is that FET transistor is going to be modulating on and off. Now why do they use a FET transistor? Well, because the input impedance is extremely low. These condenser microphones, they're very, very low capacitance values. The nice expensive ones are about 50 picofarads, and the little electrets are about 26 picofarads, something like that, and the voltages are very, very small. So you need some way of looking at those voltage swings without disturbing anything, without bleeding down that capacitor. So you need a very, very high impedance transistor or tube amplifier. So the FET allows you to have a very, very high impedance. You need to bias that FET, and there's a one gig ohm, a thousand mega ohm resistor that biases that transistor. So very, very high input impedances. Now that FET transistor has a 2K resistor on top and a 2K resistor on the bottom. 
So when that transistor turns on and off, those two voltage nodes, one goes up, one goes down, one goes up, one goes down. Um, and those two bipolar transistors are just impedance converters. They take those very low impedances that the FET has and turns them into more beefy signals that can be used to drive the cable length. So in the cheap Chinese microphones, they don't need 60 volts. So they don't need that bottom section of the schematic. They don't need a DC to DC converter. They're just going to use what's available on the line called phantom power. Phantom power comes in in this particular circuit, which is extremely simple, takes that incoming voltage, runs it into a Zener diode and creates a 12 volt reference. That 12 volts is used to power the FET and the bipolar transistors. Once again, you can see that the FET has a 2.2K on the top and a 2.2K on the bottom. And as that FET wiggles up and down, those two voltage nodes wiggle up and down. They're capacitively coupled into two transistors. Those two transistors then wiggle up and down in a differential mode. And a differential signal is sent out of the microphone. This particular diagram is called the ALICE circuit. It was developed by Scott Helmke. And um, it's used by a lot of hobbyists, and it's been used by a lot of um, people interested in these types of microphones. It's very similar to the circuit you'll see in the Chinese microphones. Um, some people say the circuit's maybe a little bit better, and so this is like a hack. If you want to take your Chinese microphone and put the Alice circuit in it, maybe you get better performance. I doubt it, but um, a lot of DIYers are, are hacking microphones. Okay, so am I interested in getting a $3,000 microphone? No, too expensive. Am I interested in a $13 microphone? No probably a really bad audio quality. But there are some microphones around the $600 mark, $700 mark, $1,000 mark. And those mic microphones are the ones that really piqued my interest. It's like, okay, that seems to be the price point to get a really good microphone. Well, how do they do that? How do these companies make a really good microphone for, you know, $600, that type of range? This is a very popular microphone, the Rode NT. Um, NT1 and NT1A, and it looks very much like a Neumann, uh, same kind of shape. Inside, also, it looks very much like the Neumann. There, there's a very nice capsule at the top and a very nice circuit with very nice components. Polystyrene capacitors, nice circuit board. Um, it looks very nice, and it looks like something you can imagine. Ah, yeah, this is a modern version of those old German microphones. This is what modern technology buys you. It's probably just as good. It's just made a little cheaper. So it seems like a very interesting uh, design point. The other microphone I was very, very interested in is this one, which is a Neumann microphone. And it's kind of their answer to these new, modern, cheaper microphones. This is a TLM 103, very, very popular microphone. There's a 102 and a 103. They're a little bit different. I like the 103. Um, but uh, again, it looks a little bit like the old microphone, but it's shorter, uh, not as much bottom part of the microphone. So it means that they've shrunk the electronics down. They didn't need as much area for the electronics. And here's a cutaway view looking down. You can see the capsule on top, and you can see that the circuit board is at 90 degrees now, uh, and it sets in a circle inside the microphone case. So it doesn't need to be very big any longer. With surface mount parts, it all fits in a nice little circle. And it's a very nice circuit board. It's not FR4. It's not fiberglass. It is alumina. And alumina is a very expensive board, but very, very low leakage. So I'm sure that's why they used it. It's extremely low leakage. And if you look close, you'll see that the circuit is actually partly surface mount parts, but also deposited resistors. So on top of the alumina, some resistors have been deposited. And in an and even in addition to being deposited, they were laser trimmed. If we zoom in, we can see the little black burn marks where the board was made and then under test, it was laser trimmed to make those resistors match what values 
that the customer wanted exactly or maybe trimmed actually once the board was entirely built and the whole thing as a as a unit was then trimmed after the fact and i think that might be the case um, but of course that's going to add to the manufacturing cost a lot uh, so I can imagine why this microphone is at a $1,000 price point and maybe is better than the $600 one.